these folks who tell us to move on, that it's not a big deal, that we should forget what's happened, or even telling us to apologize, um, these are the same tactics of abusers. AOC is an elected official, and she was using her platform to talk about something that, unfortunately, too many women uh, across this country, it's something that is very hard to discuss, which is sexual violence. Uh, she also talked about the attacks that happened on the Capitol. Um, for those who didn't see it, let's play a, a clip of that really quick, and then we'll, we'll get to the, uh, the pushback. The reason I say this and the reason I'm getting emotional in this moment is because these folks who tell us to move on, that it's not a big deal, that we should forget what's happened, or even telling us to apologize, um, these are the same tactics of abusers. And um, I'm a survivor of sexual assault. Um, and I haven't told many people that in my life. Um, but when we go through trauma, trauma compounds on each other. And so whether you had a negligent or you know, a neglectful parent, and, or whether you had someone who was verbally abusive to you, um, whether you are a survivor of abuse, um, whether you experience any sort of trauma um, in your life, small to large, these episodes can compound on one another. There's no, you know, something really big happening to you, and then you deal with it and then you move on. And then when something else happens to you, you deal with that and then, when you, and then you move on. All of our experiences make us who we are. And, um, and that's also to say that most people live with trauma and it's not to, and that doesn't even diminish, you know, any of the trauma that any one of us may have been through. Um, but it is to say that there is a community of so many people who can understand. So she started off by talking about her experience on Capitol Hill as, um, you know, before that, uh, she has been getting, and, and she's not the only one. She, she's just been very open about it. Um, she's been getting a slew of death threats. In fact, one very serious attempt, uh, organized, um, and then to have the experience of, of not just living with security around you. And, and, and I can speak, you know, having known her when she got elected, how quickly that happened and how she needed to be protected. And, and, um, uh, people don't realize how, how much these women are going through the squad in particular, and she's not the only one. I mean, Nancy Pelosi is a, a figure that's on Fox news every day. They mock, mock her and um, Maxine waters. And while we may not agree with all the politics, these are people who get threats. And I'm sure that there are some on the right as well. Um, it is a unique experience to be in the public eye as a woman. And I have my own experiences. She's had her experiences. Linda Sarsour, my dear friend, has had experiences. Uh, Nina Turner's, I mean, I know several people who've had very traumatic experiences that come from a basis of, of misogyny and um, the roots are really dark and racism. And, um, and to already carry that fear around with you and then actually see it almost played out and knowing exactly who they were targeting. And as she's talking about this, <laughs> To, to continue to get attacks from people. Um, it reminds me a lot of Gamergate and some of the, organi the, the, the online targeting and harassment, and uh, it just re-traumatizes you. And I know that personally, it re-traumatizes you every single time there's a flare-up. Uh, Joshua, you, you work in these spaces. You work specifically around trauma and and and. It's not easy being an organizer and it's not easy being an organizer as a woman or if you're coming from an indigenous community. I mean, these are communities that have just been traumatized over and over again, and they're trying to organize their way out of it. And so to have this over and over, and then when you're vulnerable, which is what they tell you to do, to connect with people, to inform people, you just get re-traumatized again and attacked. Um, 
that's the strategy, right? It's to silence people stepping up. Is that really what this is about? Yeah, I, I hadn't actually seen that that clip of AOC, so I'm I'm actually still feeling it in in my body, and um, I just think it's 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 so courageous not just to share your story, which is what she's doing, um, but to take the leadership of then politicizing it, right? Like, and what I mean by that um, is that uh, to actually connect the dots that the the roots of of the way that trauma plays itself out in, in this society happen along the fault lines of white supremacy, happen along the fault lines of uh, misogyny and patriarchy, happen along the fault lines of um, capital and, and class oppression. And, um, you know, so coming out of uh, most, I'll, first I'll just say most women that I know are survivors of sexual assault and most activists that I know um, come to this work by uh, doing healing around their trauma and realizing through that process uh, that the source of their trauma um, is these systems that we live under and that these systems can be dismantled and changed. And there's a great sense of agency that happens in social movements as the result of that. Uh, And also, um, you know, us, us playing our trauma out on one another um, and the internet is very good at amplifying that, right? Because um, one of the things that trauma can do to us is um, regardless of the source, and I'm also someone who's, who's come through a lot of trauma in my life, is, um, you know, it puts us into a fight or flight state. And when we react from that state, it's very difficult to be politically effective. It's very difficult to build social movements. It's very difficult to build solidarity because you are in a... Um, a state of threats, your nervous system is in a state of threats, which is why that when AOC comes out um, and shares her experience in this way, it's it's extra powerful that she's able to center in um, focusing on, on what matters and uh, helping share with people that they're not alone. You know, I think a lot of people in our society think of trauma as like one acute experience of like extreme violation or victimization. And it is that, but there's also a lot of other kinds of trauma and living in a collapsing civilization. (laughs) uh, I mean, that ecologically speaking, but also the decline of an empire politically speaking, and also the deprivation uh, that we're living under economically speaking is trauma as well. And so I think the gift that AOC is offering all people is to be able to identify uh, with with what it would mean to to heal. And I think social movements at their best um, are able to elicit empathy and compassion uh, for the sake of healing. And so when people pile on, um, to go back to your original question and framing, Nomi, um, to someone who's experienced trauma and then compound that trauma even further by attacking them, uh, whether it's conscious or not, that is absolutely a strategy. That's a strategy of an abuser. And when that gets weaponized for political, for, for, uh, for politics sake, um, uh, it, it, it does that to, to a whole movement. And I think when, when people behave that way online, it, it ricochets out, uh, as well. And, um, yeah, sorry. I didn't know we were going to be talking about this. I'm getting emotional. I, I, it was, it was, no, I'm, I'm glad yeah. that, I mean, in a way, I'm glad that you hadn't seen it um, because it's, it's much more uh, raw, right? We've, it's, it hasn't become a political talking point yet. And, um, but this was such a big story and it was such a, you know, an opportunity to, to, to inform and have a deeper conversation about something. And I'm really happy that she used her platform to do that. And it took a ton of courage. I mean, everything that she does now takes a ton of courage just because there's so much light on her. She opens her mouth and she gets attacked from every single angle. Um, and, and I, and I asked that question about, is this the strategy? Because uh, she's also used as a, as, as a warning to other people, women, people of color, fall in line. I mean, this is not a new tactic. It's just amplified right now. Um, don't step out because you too could experience this. Uh, I know it through my own experiences politically, like when I <laughs> criticize some people <laughs> for, for funding, they try to you know, uh, go after me and then say to other people, you do this and we're going to do the same thing to you, literally as threats. Um, it's, it's a tale as old as time. And, and I mean, 
Napoleon, I mean, there's, there's no denying that this is like gendered, this is racist, but it's about keeping the masses contained and the, the masses are now gaining power and they have voices in Congress. Um, what's your take on all this? I mean, but I think we, we live in a society of, of, you know, it's part of capitalism too. It's like, we kind of live in a society of bullying. We live in a very uh, misogynist society. I see it in my circles, you know, I, I, when I do music, but I also see it, you know, when, when, when I do workshop uh, for, 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 for kids, like in, you know, Rikers Island or, or go, go to the, I used to go to the schools before this COVID and a lot of the kids in these schools went through trauma. So we had to do some sort of like, you know, being aware of the trauma that people are going through. And also just being from the islands in Comoros, like most of us go through trauma and like most of the women in my family, some, some men too, but men don't even talk about it most of the times in these type of cultures, but they go through it too. And I think um, it's a bold move and it's, it's, a, it's, I'm really happy that, that she's showing people that they could be vulnerable and it's also showing her, her her human side, where she she's sharing a part a, a part that you don't see a lot. Like I'm pretty sure there's other people in in women in power and women who've been through things like that who haven't shared it throughout history. Of course there has been, and so I think it's very kind of revolutionary that 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 she shared it. And the fact that people are attacking them, like I think we need to protect each other. Like, and I tell a lot of men because I'm in a and all these, these circles are male dominated. Most of these circles anyways, you know, but like it's in a music game, it's like, there's a lot of misogyny. It's like misogyny to the 10th power. And I always tell like other men, like we have to be able to call it out when we see it. Because a lot of times, like, like Trump was the perfect example with all oh, this just locker room talk, but that, that locker room talk is not cool. And, and when you hear somebody do something, you got to speak up and we have to protect each other in that way, too. So people could feel safe when you have a movement, when you have a company, you set the tone, you set the culture, you have a group and, and everybody that like especially men have to step up to the plate and be responsible with, with like the position that, that they, they've held historically and, and, and what they could do, you know? I, I'm so glad you brought that up. Um, uh, you know, we just got a, a, a comment from somebody on Twitch. Invincible Queer says, in order for us men to dismantle misogyny, confronting within is paramount. More like taxes, but charity starts at home. I'm really glad that you brought that up because one thing that I'm asking, and I have to be more vocal, um, and this is why it was so powerful for AOC to come out with her experiences. Um, there's been so much online like toxicity in the last uh, few months. And some of it does echo uh, experiences that other women experienced on um, with Gamergate, which was deep rooted misogyny and right wing misogyny, like organized, I say, because it was right wing and politicized. And, and that has, um, expanded over the last decade into online communities, but it is structured and it is facilitated. It, it doesn't all, it, 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 there can be organic uh, recreations, but much of it is actually funded and organized and um, weaponized to silence women from speaking up about their experiences, just in any experiences. And so one thing that I'm being very thoughtful about now is asking men to speak out because, um, you know, for the last two months, there've been a lot of women on the left who've been getting attacked, um, by, by, by men. And I think, uh, some of the men didn't realize how bad it was until they <laughs> experienced it personally. And they're like, we didn't even know. And I said, well, yeah, we've been trying to tell you. So I think what you bring up Napoleon is important. Allies need to speak up always on behalf of other communities. And I will, as much as I can, um, but we have to actually like call this out with each other. And so I'm, I'm grateful for you to, for saying that. And uh, final thoughts before we wrap, uh, Joshua. So just to say that, you know, part of, part of the hope of, of movements is that we, we can create, um, we can create spaces that make it easier to mm. confront and transform patriarchy because this stuff is the muscle memory of our it, of our society, right? And so the reason there's, and, and I really appreciate, Nomi, the way you point out, there's an aspect of this that's funded, that's an, an intentional strategy, um, but, but patriarchy is a system of control that is um, 
oh, sorry, it's a little loud here, um, okay. that in, in addition to the intentional weaponizing of it, um, it, it, it just swims in the culture in a way that's, that's thoughtless for many people. Mm. And I, I think for, especially for those of us who are doing men's work, to think of it as practice, like, like the, the, it's muscle memory. The more, the more that you create spaces of vulnerability, the more you create spaces to feel your feelings and invite other people to do the mm-hmm. same, the more that you create spaces where people can feel whole. And whether that's in an organization, whether that's in your union, whether that's in a community group, whether that is in the context of a campaign, uh, the more you will have the layer of practice to be able to confront things when the stakes are a lot more serious. And when there is a risk to yourself and when the consequences are, are higher and because uh, ultimately what we're talking about is um, what does what's the shape of accountability, both, you know, in, inside the left and, and outside the left. And accountability isn't just kind of some abstract goal or, or you know, like there's it, it's it's relational. Right. It's right. it's how we build with one another. And so. Um, that's why I put so much faith into grassroots social movements that are generally offline <laughs> um, to be able to humanize one another. And uh, I, th- I think that's where the, the, the work is. And, um, and I think the more that the folks can understand that trauma is, is the way that we are reproducing these systems of harm mm. and that, that um, transforming our trauma is part of the work of movements, right? That we, we heal through um, through the fight, yeah. right? So that, that it's not just about the policy goal that we land on at the end of the campaign, um, but, but how are we getting there in a way that is ultimately uh, empowering one another to, to build, build broader power in society? Can, can I uh, piggyback just, on what he's saying? Mm-hmm. I, love, I love what he said because I'm I've, I've noticing e- even lately, every time I go on Twitter, and it, it, it's like a muscle memory too, and from from the standpoint of oppression, I, I think like we the way we speak each, to each other too is like important because I feel like sometimes we speak to each other in oppressive manners and we might not realize it and it might be and and I think that once we become aware of these tones and we 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 create these spaces where we can speak to each other in a certain way, I think it's gonna draw more people in. To, to, to the causes that we have to, to, to fight for and everything like that. And I think if we start to mimic the quote unquote oppressive, you know, parts of this society or, or the heritage that we have, I think that, that that's not the way forward for us as a whole and, and for, for us as a movement. Well said, man, this is a, a teachable moment. And, and, you know, and, and thank you to AOC for, igniting this um, because now we're having these conversations in this space uh, rather than, you know, making fun of Ted Cruz today because we had a choice. <laughs> well, one more thing. Yeah, yeah, I right. want to know, what do you think, like, uh, like let's say us men, let's say I, I speak yeah. for men, we do to help things. For example, if like uh, we, we see a woman getting bullied, we're not talking about on the street, uh, on the streets, obviously, but on Twitter or on mm-hmm. spaces like this. What could be things that we could do? I, th- I mean, that's a great question. And, and, and maybe I marinate on that more and I come back with more concrete. I, I think, number one, I mean, if it's coming from from a man, um, you know, say it like you mean a really amazing thing happened the other day. I had a Twitter follower of mine um, and I don't I'm I regretfully don't check my DMs and my um, mentions as much. But I caught this one and it said I'm incredibly sorry for what I said about you a few few weeks ago. I guess he'd used the C word um, towards me. And it wasn't that he thought that he disagreed with me. Um, it's not that suddenly he agreed with me. It's just he realized somebody had educated him on how inappropriate that was and how, you know, we Twitter's very impulsive. So people just like let out. And so I think for for man for for an ally to say and and really, you know, it'd be great if it was coming from a man, because um, you know, when I defend Anna Kasparian, I suddenly get a stomach attack. So when Alma defends me or whatever, it's like a circular firing firing squad. It's just saying, like, you know, maybe educating a little bit more, like how can she not have an opinion? Why do you have to respond that way? It obviously just depends on what the the pushback is, but I think informing um, 
more people about how bad it is. I mean, even my closest allies weren't even aware of, of how often we get death threats and horrible sexualized um, threats of violence uh, will get doxxed. Um, I mean, I've had letters sent to my family's house before. And I think just maybe for people you know in particular that could be speaking out, maybe just letting them know, like, this is a day to day. They're living this trauma day to day to day. Every time people open up Twitter and they see an attack or this, it's a day to day. I mean, I have had um, people I've worked for me who uh, in the past have, um, you know, expressed their emotional uh, interest in me and I had to uh, say no and then they basically retaliated against me um, and so this is I mean this happens a lot with women and so maybe letting more men know that like this is the norm and then when you see something calling it out and saying yo God, like is that really you can disagree with this person why do you have to say that to them I think that's a start I can think more deeply about this and if you know Joshua you have any ideas any you work in this space you know please feel free to to contribute. Um, but um, yeah, I appreciate that question. And, and if anybody else has ideas. Thanks for watching and listening to the Nomi Key Show. But remember to click like and subscribe on YouTube and please share on social media. If you're not already a patron, please join us for as low as $5 a month on patreon.com slash the Nomi Key Show for early and special content. That investment makes a huge difference. We are not corporate media raking in the dough. It's really you guys that are keeping us going. So please consider being a patron. And to our current patrons, thank you so much. We are incredibly grateful to you. We also now have swag. So check us out on the nomikisho.com to get your mugs, your totes, and your stickers.